Good afternoon. Corporate action for impact is critical to the success of business of so many organizations. Along with the WBC, we do a lot to drive equal position, pay, and power for all women in business. We're here today to have a conversation on the impact and actions, impact that corporations across industries are driving in their workplace, with their stakeholders, and across their communities in terms of equity and equality for women. We know this impacts business outcomes and the programs drive real corporate purpose. So welcome into the conversation. My name is Fern Johnson, CTO Vice President from PepsiCo, and I'm your moderator for this afternoon's discussion. Let's have a very quick intro of our esteemed panel of women. Anna? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Annalisa Esposito Bloom. I'm with Northrop Grumman, where I uh, have the pleasure of serving as Vice President of CEO and Leadership Communications. Uh, so thank you for having me. Welcome, Jamie. Hello, uh, Jamie Jorgis. I lead our Mid Atlantic um, occupier business for CDRE, which is a global commercial real estate services company. I've been here for at the same firm for over 18 years in a couple different markets. Welcome, Justina. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, my name is Justina Nixon St. Hill. I'm the Vice President and Chief Impact Officer at IBM, and I lead IBM's education efforts to invest in the future of work through programs that focus on underrepresented communities, and I'm also the environmental, social, and governance focal for IBM. So I'm excited to be here today to share the work that we're doing to drive impact in our communities. Wonderful. Welcome, Justina. I'm Antia. I am Amantia Muhedini. I am an executive director and sustainable and impact investing strategist with UBS Global Wealth Management. Um, UBS is the largest um, uh, global wealth manager in the world. And, and I sit here with the perspective of an investor looking at why and how diversity and sustainability matter and how we can identify those excellent companies in, in the market. Welcome everyone. So what's nice is we have a real good cross section of industries here to speak on this topic. So let's let's jump let's jump right in. We don't have much time, so uh, we're going to have a spitfire conversation here. Let's you know first think about how integral um, the impact of showing equity and purpose is critical to just the overall business strategy. Annalisa, can you kind of talk us through how you think that's important? Absolutely, firm. I think. When we consider the business, especially a business like Northrop Grumman, where we're responsible for advancing not just human interest in space and beyond, but how do we protect and also then ensure that, you know, from a defense perspective, we're responsible for a lot of the world's hardest problems. And if you start there and think about what that requires from a problem solving perspective, we need the best, brightest thinkers in the room. We need people without boundaries. We need people with diversity of background and thought because the problems in front of us are so complex, so challenging that we have to have that diversity of thought right there in the room so that we get to the very best outcomes faster, quicker, because the other end of that is a customer that's depending on us to help maintain democracy as well as look further into outer space and unlock the secrets of the universe. So when you start there with that as your North Star, that diversity of thought gets us to solutions better, faster, quicker, it's inherent in your business and drives all decisions from that point on. And I really think that that is an enabler that helps us unlock and keep us focused on bringing in diverse backgrounds, diverse thinking, bringing in female representation, intersectional representation, all of that's just so core to who we are and how we think about our role in making the world a better and safer place. So, you know, PepsiCo is in that same spot. I mean, like your organization and like yours, Justine at IBM, we have hundreds of thousands of associates and our stakeholders are just as broad and vast. So. You talked about faster, better, quicker. We call it faster, better, stronger at PepsiCo, Anna. So it's very similar. Uh, Justina, do you have a perspective of how it's important at IBM? Yeah, absolutely. So IBM's purpose is to be a catalyst that makes the world work better. So when you think about that purpose and 
our overall strategy to be a leader in hybrid cloud and artificial intelligence, two of the biggest technologies that are being used today. What we do across corporate social responsibility and across making sure that we are driving impact in our communities, we have to make sure that we are aligned very closely to the purpose of the business and also the strategy of the business. Um, that's the way that you can make sure that your initiatives, your programs are sustainable, that you have support across leaders in the business. And that's another way that you can engage all of your employees um, with the work that you're doing to drive impact. So I definitely believe that demonstrating our impact and aligning that impact with the organization's business strategy and the organization's purpose are both critical to making sure that you could be sustainable in the long term. Um, you know, back in 2022, actually last year, it feels like a long time ago, but just last year, we launched IBM Impact. And IBM Impact is a unified, comprehensive approach that makes it very easy to communicate our societal commitments and to demonstrate our progress against those commitments. And one of the reasons we did that is to make it easy for employees to understand what we're doing around society, right? What are we doing around equitable impact, environmental impact, and ethical impact, but also to make sure that investors, our clients, our nonprofit partners, society at large, understand the work that we're doing, the commitments that we're making, and to make sure that they can see that we are very transparent in the progress that we are making against those commitments. So again, it has to be aligned to our company strategy. It has to be aligned to our company purpose. And that's where you can really bring all of it together to have the biggest impact in, in society. Wow, that was a lot. And that is doing a lot across IBM. So thank you for sharing that. You know, anyone else want to share about what impact is having or what is happening in your overall business strategies, whether it be on CBRE or in any other space? Anything to add on to what uh, has been shared from Northrop and IBM? Well, then let's dive into our next question. So what's your organization doing specifically to drive equity? So now we're talking about equity within your company and the communities and business stakeholders. Jamie, I think CBRE has been playing in this for some time. Can you shed some light on, on what you've been doing in the last few years? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. This, um, this is a great question. As, as I was thinking about it from an equity standpoint, um, we do a lot of kind of company-wide things, which I'll jump into in a little bit, but, but real estate's local, right? There's still a very localized aspect of it. And, you know, driving equity within your own community where we kind of live and work is really critical and is actually quite meaningful for a lot of our employees and all the clients and kind of stakeholders that we serve as well. So I'll give you some kind of macro highlights, right? So CB as an organization from an equity standpoint, we're driving that community impact, a lot of supplier diversity, right? A lot of spend that we do on behalf of all of our clients and ultimately, you know, where we're delivering it in underrepresented communities. And we have huge goals relative to ultimately supplier diversity. But at the local level, we also do. We want to impact the community here. And if, um, you know, and it also involves and engages our own internal employees relative to, you know, spend on what you're ordering for office lunch, right? So in practice of running a business, and to actually send that to somebody local that is a local, you know, minority owned business or whatever the case is. So we do a lot of things macro, but we really like to make sure that we touch from a local perspective. Um, we invest in a lot of programs and kind of organizations, nonprofits that focus on educating and developing a diverse talent workforce um, worldwide, right? Real estate is not something people always think about getting into, right? It's a services organization, although it's very expansive and there's a lot of different pieces and parts that you can do, but not a lot of uh, you know, people across the board really understand that. So we really have to help invest in building the pipeline, developing the talent. Um, so we just team up with a lot of great organizations, Project Destin, Girls Inc., Thurgood Marshall College Fund, Hiring Heroes, excuse me, across the board. But again, that also touches up a local level too. And then finally, from an equity standpoint, back to like our own communities, we actually reward our professionals for that volunteer activity and engagement and involvement and mentorship and, you know, tutoring all of that actually at the local level, people can win awards for it. They get to 
uh, you know, donor to match, donor match kind of campaigns that we ultimately have. So we do a lot to make sure that we are helping to support our professionals to be able to get out in the environment and also kind of help to develop them and then build the workforce of the future that's going to impact everybody, real estate or not. Awesome. And then PepsiCo, we're doing the same a lot in our community. You know, we invested uh, 2020, we leaned in and said we were investing millions, 500 million to our Black community and into our Latino community and partnering with local nonprofits to help them. So we've established several programs, a Black restaurant accelerator program, um, also work with nonprofit organizations to really help them in the local community. So I totally get your point around uh, real estate being local, our product is in local markets. So how do we help those local restaurants and those local communities uh, and bodegas that actually you know, sell our products and, and service our, our community? So thank you so much for sharing that. Justine, anything that you want to add from an IBM perspective on equity? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my role really focuses on our external communities. And there are two uh, programs that we um, we implement to really drive impact. And one is the work that we're doing around skilling um, underrepresented groups or those who have been underrepresented in the tech workforce. Mm -hmm. And this is really about how do we make sure we are bringing the right skills, especially tech skills, but also workplace learning skills um, to, for example, to women, um, to university students, especially with, through our partnerships with historically black colleges and universities, um, to nonprofit organizations that are working to upskill the black and Hispanic communities. And how do we make sure they're developing valuable new skills that can help them obtain new career opportunities? So we partner with organizations like Mom Relaunch, where we work with um, mothers to give them enhanced access to tech skills, those workplace learning skills, project management and design thinking, and really help them make that connection from obtaining those skills to a new job opportunity that increases their social and economic mobility. And then when you think about the acceleration of new technologies like artificial intelligence and everything that's happening now around generative AI, we actually just announced this week a commitment to skill 2 million people over the next wow. three years on generative AI, because we know that with every new acceleration of new technologies, you start widening the gap, right? And you start seeing inequities. So we wanna make sure that we do not see that gap around generative AI. And we wanna make sure that we are skilling people and augmenting their skills and making sure they understand how do I use these new tools to be successful in my current role or how do I use the tools to be able to get a new opportunity? So it's really important to us to make sure that we are continuing to focus on those underrepresented communities and really important that we are driving impact, not just making sure they are obtaining those skills, but also working with nonprofit organizations to help those learners obtain new job opportunities as well. So that's just one example of what we're doing around skills building. Another example is around sustainability, where we work with nonprofit organizations to access our own platforms, our own solutions, and our expertise to iterate on solutions that are supporting vulnerable communities, those communities that are most impacted by environmental threats and climate change. And what's really great about this is we are working on projects like clean energy and sustainable agriculture and we are looking at that impact. We're looking at the farmers that are in Costa Rica and Malawi and India and in Texas who are struggling with drought or increasing yield and making sure we give them the tools to be successful because once we can help them increase yield, we could also help them increase their income as well. And what I really love about this work is some of the big nonprofits that we are working with around sustainability, like the Nature Conservancy or um, Heifer International or Sustainable Energy for All, they're led by women CEOs. Awesome. So it's really great that we can target these organizations led by women, demonstrating our impact on the ground as well in sustainability and really looking at how can we scale those solutions to have an even bigger global impact. So those are just two of the um, initiatives that we are really focused on uh, in our communities. Thanks, Justine. You know, upscaling and rescaling um, is so important. And, you know, we at PepsiCo, and I'm going to always weave in a little PepsiCo piece here. 
we're doing a lot with women's return to work and taking mid-career women and how do we upskill and reskill them, especially with generative AI and all of the new capabilities that when they decided to take a break, you know, weren't prevalent, right? And so it's important that we give them the right skills, the right wraparound support certification so that they're ready to come back in. So PepsiCo is doing a lot uh, in terms of women. But Anna, anything you want to add on this dialogue? I think you had a perspective as well to share. Yes, yes. And, and above all, the convening authority that we have as major players, bringing people together from academia, from third parties, from corporate, from those social communities that we stand with is, is so important. So I know we've seen recent economic data that suggests that there's more women in the workforce now than ever. But the reality is what's coming up too is we've got childcare cliffs, we've got, you know, as their book ending, the responsibilities of taking care of people, taking care of themselves, children, et cetera, what impact that will have long term. And I think programs like I Return, where someone who has a gap in their skills can get that mentorship and get accelerated back into the workforce is so important because the area where I really want to address that equity is that when we look at the forthcoming ability to fill roles with domestically, which something Northrop Grumman cares a tremendous amount about, we are looking at a deficit over the next five to 10 years of nearly 60 million people who do not have the tech skills and talent to enter the jobs that we need in the areas of most critical importance. AI, quantum computing, hypersonics, connectivity, all of these things that impact you all, but really have a larger forefront impact in defense because we're here at the cutting edge of it. And if in the next five years, we don't have the talent to sustain what our commitments are, that's something that should be really front and center. So for us, it's K through 12 education. It's acting as that convening authority when we can, not just for women, but for multi-sectional, multi-background um, so that we are getting that diversity of thought, diversity of influence. And that when we say that we're a partner, that we believe in belonging, you saw it, you felt it, you trusted it because everything in the system supported that from how we entered the conversation relative to getting technical skills in K through 12 education, our partnerships with technical talent builds and universities and uh, community colleges, the way that we're identifying similar skills, like looking at individuals who serve as nail techs, that fine detail work, if you think about it, it's the same type of detail work that we do in manufacturing satellites. So we're bringing in women and bringing them into a career at the front line where they can have a 401k, where they have PTO, where they have stability, security, they have an opportunity to advance and still find a community that supports them. That's the type of fresh thinking that I think really then brings in quality to the forefront, aligns to a business objective, and then allows us to proceed in this vision of having a very stable, secure R&D environment because we're leading on the bleeding edge of technology. And that's really where I think, as I heard Justina speak, I think many of us are aligned in that initiative and see a real tremendous opportunity to adjust, not just for the skills gap, but for the gender and background gap as well. So thanks so much, Anna, for sharing that. So Amantia, so tell us, you're coming from the investor's perspective. And so give us a, a little bit on why investors care about equity and why they're looking at organizations who care about equity as well. Thanks, Erin. And, and it's such a pleasure to just sit here and listen to you four talk about kind of the, the specific corporate uh, kind of activities across your four industries. In some ways, this is a lot of what I do is, is kind of sit and look at this at large scale. Um, as, a, as a UBS financial analyst, really what, what I do is try to answer two questions from our clients who are investors. One question that, that we get most commonly, and I think this everyone in the audience will appreciate this, is uh, where do I put my money right now? Right? Where do I invest? what are your best ideas, UBS, for where I can get the highest returns? Um, so that's one question. The second question that I get, uh, perhaps not as frequently, but increasingly so, is I'm someone who cares about diversity for a myriad of reasons, maybe because I am myself female or because I have young children that are going in the workforce. So, so or because I just I read the news and I'm looking at how the world is changing. How do I invest thinking about the fact that I care about diversity? And now what's interesting is that uh, fortunately for both of the, these questions, the answer is sort of the same. Um, so one of our top investment ideas here for the longer term is investing in companies which are leaders in diversity and equity as well as inclusion. Uh, 
Um, so we, we think of that as a longer term investment opportunities where we think these companies will be able to outperform the broader market over the longer kind of cycle here, over thinking uh, in, in a eight to 10 kind of year time frame. Um, the reason why we think that this is an important investment opportunity is because we're seeing some important tailwinds um, behind these companies. We're seeing first and foremost that the next generation that is rising here is the most diverse that we've ever seen. This yeah. is particularly true here in the US. And so, and I think I see you all nodding because as uh, people working in these companies, your clients and your customers, of course, are going to be more diverse. And this is ultimately part of why you need to then respond to, to this more diverse client, partner, supplier kind of, uh, kind of base. And that's why it matters. We're also seeing generally some uh, kind of uh, significant data that has coalesced around making a point that more diverse teams are more innovative. I think Annalisa, you opened with that in your first point. Uh, we've seen, we follow that academic research very closely and that's kind of systematically showing that innovation and diversity are, are highly correlated. Uh, and that's why it matters to us as investors, ultimately. Like firms with more patents tend to be the firms that have more diverse leadership and then more diverse workforce. So that's the second part. And then third, we're seeing that ge generally investors, all stakeholders care. So when we looked at the number of times in shareholder calls, the terms around DEI, gender, diversity, that kind of language was mentioned, um, between just 2018 and 2022, that number tripled. So investors were asking, uh, corporate executives were, were talking about it, uh, and it kind of three times as much in just the last five years. And while this specific thing may come, come in and out a little bit of the conversation quarter to quarter, the fundamental discussions and the fundamental policies that are being put in place, which you're giving examples of, are there. And so as investors, we need to find, well, what are these companies that will then outperform? And it's clearly, it's also a question of competing for this new talent that we're upskilling and reskilling, as you're discussing, and then competing for the consumer, client, vendor and so forth relationship that that matters so so that's broadly why in a way we care about it uh from from an investment perspective no thank you i appreciate that all of those are important and you know you 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 are tracking what's being measured and i think what measures what matters and some of the things that we talk about because we're always tracking and we're always trying to make sure we put some good analytics against that um just annalisa i'm sorry justina What's not measured? I mean, I think you have made a point in our earlier conversation that it's sometimes not what's measured, but what's not measured. Yeah, so, um, you know, we're, I'm very much a measurement person. <laughs> so we, we measure everything, just about everything that we do. Um, you know, I do think that um, when you look at what is the, almost the catalytic investment that you can have or the catalytic impact that you can have in communities, that is not currently measured. When you think about what all of our companies are doing, and we focus mm -hmm. in, in, in certain communities, how can we all come together and figure out what is this bigger impact that we can have as a coalition, a group of companies, and how we can really make a difference? Because many times, um, companies are actually working in silo. And I think if we can come together, we can have even a bigger impact. Um, some of the other things that we're doing, I mean, just mentorship, right? How do we engage our employees to be able to just mentor young people or adults who are looking for new opportunities? It could be as simple as, you know, reviewing a LinkedIn profile or reviewing a, a resume. Um, those things sometimes tend to be a bit harder, um, you know, to measure, but it really makes a difference internally for our IBMers. Um, the feeling of engagement, what does that mean to be proud of being a part of a company that is focused on impact? And how do we make sure that we are bringing them into all of the programs that we have? So those are some of the things that we are continuing to do day in, day out with our, with our IBMers. But I am a very much a proponent of how do we measure impact? How do we track it? And how do we demonstrate um, progress? How do we make sure it's transparent? So, um, you know, uh, investors, clients, potential employees, right? See the work that we're doing and also current employees understand the work that we're doing and that's a way to uh, retain them as well. So definitely a big proponent of, of measurement. Yeah, and I think if we measure transparency creates trust, right? And if you have that in a pu very public format where we can consume it, 
Um, it shows our commitment and it shows when we're doing phenomenal and when we have opportunity areas. I think it's important to measure always. So you wouldn't believe it, but we're down to the final five minutes of this discussion. And what I thought we would do to wrap it up is just really hear from everyone and kind of a round robin on what's the call to action. So we have many folks who are listening to us. Again, we're coming from CPG, we're coming from real estate, we're coming from tech, we're coming from financial background. Just give us in your simple terms, what are the one or two things that you'd say if you're listening, right, and you're not doing anything, what's your call to action? If you are already knee deep and engaged in driving programs for equity and impact and equity and equality, what more to do? Let's just hear quickly from everyone and then we'll wrap it up. So I'm going to call you out and just ask for a quick one or two uh, things and then we'll move on to the next. So Annalisa, we'll start with you. I would say two things. One, if you're not already tying financial outcomes broadly to results relative to creating the right behaviors, outcomes, and metrics that we all know we're driving to from an equality perspective, if your leadership compensation does not reflect your efforts and whether or not you hired, retained, and built talent, that is a real indice and is a tremendous motivator because it shows across the board the level of commitment, not just in writing, but in action. And then the other thing, when you look across the S&P 500, 41 of those companies are led by women and they're outperforming the remaining because this commitment shows a level of integrity and fidelity to a vision those leaders who are promoting and advancing people with diverse backgrounds, women, are showing that at the heart of their business, they are strategic, they have integrity, they're measuring their success, and they are making moves. And that's why you're seeing time and time again, those businesses are outperforming others because it all ties back to the overarching strategy and they're holding themselves to account. So I would say those are the two things that I would, I would advise anyone who is thinking about getting into the space more broadly. Awesome. Accountability accounts. Jamie. I'm going to go in a little bit of a different direction with this. So um, I'm taking it from the viewpoint of the everyday employee. There could be a lot of different people that are listening into this. Somebody who, who has you know, a position to make big, bold change, catalytic change. It was such a great word. Um, but what we need to actually do is start little, do something, even if it's not within your control inside your own organization or for your clients or for your community, you can do something right? Don't wait for the larger mothership to, you know, push down what you need to do. There are little things every single day. There are big things. You can just get involved and, and get excited, but like every single human being can do one small thing every single day to drive more equity and inclusion around what you're doing. And I, I you know, challenge and call to action for everyone to ultimately do that and the big things too, but little things do matter. Awesome. Justina. Yeah, there, there are two things. Um, one, as I mentioned before, with the explosion of technologies like generative AI, I think it's imperative that everyone focuses on what does that mean for themselves, um, how corporations can invest in upskilling and reskilling their own talent, and how they have to look at communities that have been historically excluded from the tech workforce and make sure they're investing in those communities as well and make sure they understand how to use the technology to benefit themselves. So that's the first thing. The second thing is around partnerships. Um, you know, this cannot happen in silos. It really requires companies to work together. It really requires companies to work with nonprofit organizations also on the ground who understand those communities, understand those realities, and they can, they are better able to support those communities, of course, in partnership with, with companies like ours. Um, but those are two things, generative AI and skills and partnerships. Awesome. Amantia, take us home. Yes, happy to. Uh, I'd say three things. So, so the first one is a focus on who is around the table is important, but often I, I hear executives start with buts and ifs, and I can't. And I think my, my plea here is to look at those buts and ifs and whens and just turn them into what is the, the source thing here that makes me think that maybe this isn't possible to do to get a diverse leadership and broad workforce, uh, and then maybe start from there. And we heard some great examples here of addressing that. So that's one. A second thing is it's not just about the who, but it's also once you have the right workforce and the right diverse leadership, it's whether they are feeling included and whether they're doing the what that actually enables them to speak up and for their voice to be actually mattering around the table. Um, there's some interesting research from Harvard Business School that says if you only have 
one woman in your uh, kind of hiring pool, she is not likely to get hired. As soon as you have two in the pool, then the probability of hiring a woman increases significantly, right? So that's just one thing to think about. And my third plea here is transparency. Uh, I'm sure lots of companies do great things, try to measure it, but if we don't know as the market, as investors, what's going on, we cannot reward you. We cannot give you that time that you need perhaps to invest in this change. So definitely transparency around even what's not possible yet um, is, is hopefully how we'll all get to improve here. Thank you, ladies, for some great golden nuggets from accountability, inclusiveness, transparency, measurements, strategy, strategic, strategic, and local partnerships. Yes, we can. Letting tech be the enabler, reskilling, bringing women back mid-career. All of those things are driving forces to make sure that we have change in equity and equality as we move forward. So thank you very much for being part of the discussion this afternoon. We appreciate all that you leaned in on this topic, and we hope that all the audience this afternoon enjoyed. Thank you very much.